In this video, I'm going to talk to you about triangles that you should know for the SAT. And you have to know these triangles inside and out uh, for you to even have a chance to do well on the SAT. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about two different classifications of triangles. The first one is triangles by side. In other words, the relationship is on the sides of the triangle. And then I'm going to talk to you about triangles by angle, the relationships of the angles. Okay, so I have two triangles here. They're not uh, they're not on the same scale because they wouldn't fit on on the page but these are going to be right triangles so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work in this color blue here just because we're talking about by side so I'm going to what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put a little right triangle there a little right and perpendicular angle there perpendicular angle here even though that wasn't completely straight so to indicate that these are both right triangles so the first special triangle that you should know is something called a 3-4-5 triangle and this is by far the most popular triangle on the SAT. So you need to remember that triangle. In other words, it makes a 3, 4, 5, it makes consecutive integers. And if you can verify this using Pythagorean's theorem, and again, Pythagorean's theorem is just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. There is another triangle here uh, that's pretty common. It's not as common as the 3, 4, 5, but I'm just going to mention it just in case you see it. It's called a 5, 12, 13. And it seems to be on the SAT probably once or twice, usually, during a test. But this 3-4-5 triangle is everywhere on the SAT. So you got to know these two triangles. Okay. Now, I'm also going to talk to you about the variations of these two triangles. Because just you're not necessarily going to see it written as a 3-4-5 triangle. You might see a variation of that. So let's talk about that. Okay, so a lot of times what you'll see is similar triangles of the 3, 4, 5 triangles. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's just say that you have two different triangles here. And let me give you the sides here. This first side here, let's say that you have a 6, 8, and 10 triangle here. You may not recognize that as a similar, as a, as a similar triangle to this, but it really is. So if I took this triangle here, what is the relationship between these two triangles? In other words, what did I scale that by? What's the factor? I multiplied all the sides by what? I multiplied all the sides by 2. Okay, So this is really a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, what if I gave, what if I saw a triangle down here that uh, this side was 15, this side was 25, and this side was 20. I'll just write it on the inside because I'm running out of room here. Let's say that was a 20. Is that a 3, 4, 5 triangle? It absolutely is because it's sc the scale factor for this one is what? What did I multiply all the sides by? Well, this this was 5 times 5 is 25, 3 times 5 is 15, and 4 times 5 is 20. So that triangle right there, I basically took that triangle and I multiplied all the sides by 5. So you can see that these are all just different variations of the 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? So these are variations of the 3, 4, 5 triangle. and these are similar triangles okay so they're similar similar triangles just mean that they share the same exact angles inside but the sides are different and they all scale by the same factor in this case it was times two in this case it was times five so that's on the three four five triangle the same exact thing applies for our five twelve thirteen triangle but i just use that example for the three four five so the next triangle i want to talk to you is uh... important triangles by angle so we just did the 3, 4, 5 triangle by side. Now I'm going to talk to you about angles, okay? So you got to know these triangles down cold. You can't be looking these things up during the SAT or you're going to be dead in the water. And you want to give yourself the best chance to get a high score, okay? So this is a right triangle here. This is a right triangle here. And I'm just going to give an example here. 45, 45, 90 degree isosceles right triangle, okay? So what does that mean? Isosceles means two of the sides are the same. And right triangle means one of the sides, one of the angles is 90 degrees. So I'm going to give you the just ba the base uh, triangle of this, okay? So the base sides, the base ratios are going to be 1, 1, and then the square root of 2, okay? And then inside, the angles are going to be 90, 45 here, and 45 here. So across from each 45 degree angle is 1, 1 and then root 2 okay so the, and again you can test this for yourself you can do Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared 
Okay. The same rules apply though for scaling. Okay. So you might see a triangle scaled out that does you know that you see and it looks kind of strange. But let's just say that you saw a triangle here. Uh, let's just again let me just pick a number here. Let's say that you saw a triangle here, and this side was um, seven. And this side was seven. Okay. Well, what kind of a triangle is this? First of all, you know it's isosceles, right? Because they're both seven, right? So this is 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees. So right away you know that it's a 45, 45, 90. But what are the sides? Well, you know that the base, the base triangle, that the sides are going to be 1, 1, and root 2. So what did I scale this by? I took the whole triangle and I multiplied every side by 7. Okay, So 7, 7, and this is going to be 7 root 2. And so that's an example of scaling. Uh, this isosceles right triangle. So you got to memorize this, okay? Just like you have to memorize the, the 3, 4, 5, and you should memorize the 5, 12, 13. This is the 45, 45, 90 degree isosceles right triangle. Now let's talk about one that maybe is maybe's not so obvious uh, just by looking at the size, but let's say that you knew that this was a 45, 45 triangle. Let's say that you figured it out on the problem from the geometry, 45, 45, but this side is 2. It's not root 2, it's 2. So that, that doesn't look so obvious, right? So how do you know what the other sides are, right? Because it's not root 2, it's 2. This one was obvious, right? I just multiplied all the sides by 7, right? And I got, you know, 7, 7, 7 root 2. But what if you knew that this was a 45, 45, and that was 90, and then this side was 2? What did you actually multiply this triangle by to get there? So in other words, what did I multiply my base triangle, my base ratio triangle by to get to this one? That's 2. Well. Think about this for a second. What did I what did I go from? I went from root two to two, so I had to multiply each side times what two over root two. Does that make sense? So in other words, I multiplied this times two root two. So that side, for example, this particular side, which I'll do in a different color over here just to show this particular side, the hypotenuse. I said root two times 2 over root 2. Okay, that canceled out, and then I ended up with the 2 here. So you can see that all of the sides were scaled by 2 over root 2 there. So that's really important. So now it just becomes easy, right? That this is 2 over root 2, and this side down here is 2 over two, 2 over root 2. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself down there with the next triangle. Um, now you can rationalize you can rationalize this out if you want. If you don't want the uh, the root 2 in the denominator, uh, you can basically make that, you know that we can, when I say rationalize, I, I multiply the top and the bottom by root 2, so you can say um, 2 root 2 over 2, and that would just become root 2, like that, and then this one would become the same thing, it would just be root 2. So just interesting ways to look at this, just different ways to look at the same triangle um, and, and variations of it, of a similar triangle. So sometimes it's obvious, right? Sometimes it's not so obvious, right? So you always just need to ask yourself, what did I multiply the base, uh, the base ratio triangle by to get to this one? In this case, it was easy. In this case, I had to think about it a little bit. I had to go times 2 over root 2, and then all of the sides were times 2 over root 2. So we ended up with root 2, root 2, and 2. So I saved my last two triangles by angle for last because they're, I think they're the most important ones uh, for the SAT because they kind of go hand in hand together. The first one here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so these sides do not have any special relationship in terms of being isosceles or anything like that. They're just, it's just 30, 60, 90, and we have these key ratios that we memorize for these. So this is the base ratio triangle here. So I'm going to have across from the 30 degree, this is the smallest angle, this is going to be 1. Across from the 60, this is going to be root 3. And across from the 90, that's going to be 2. And again, you just, you got to memorize these. There's no two ways about this. Don't sit there and think you're going to derive stuff on the SAT because you're not. You're fooling yourself. And really, honestly, on any test that you take in life, you should memorize as much as you can before you go into the test. Okay, 
you have a finite amount of time to perform a task and they're asking you to think about it in a way that you've never seen why do you want to waste time deriving formulas it doesn't make sense I mean that's just my opinion I mean some professors will tell you oh you don't need to memorize anything you can derive everything all you need is these three equations or and they give you something some nonsense like that well in reality you want to be as fast as you can as efficient as you can and so you just want to just spit it out just like you know your phone number your social security number you want to know these triangles you don't want to think about it you don't want to derive it okay so just get that out of your mind if you think you're going to be deriving things or flipping back to the first page to look at the formulas you're already dead in the water you're going to get a bad score okay so and we want to make sure you get a good score uh, the best that you can so let's put all the odds in your favor so let's just memorize this stuff so again the same rules apply same rules apply so let's just I'm just gonna give you another example so let's say that this is a 30 60 90 triangle here 30 60 90 and I'm just going to multiply all the sides. But well, let, let's just say that this side was 10. The hypotenuse was 10. Okay. What are the other sides? Well, you need to ask yourself, um, what did I multiply this base uh, base triangle by, the base ratio triangle by, to get that? Well, I multiplied it by 5, right? 2 times 5 is 10. So this side is 5 root 3. And this side is just 5. So again, be comfortable with going back and forth between these these triangles and I, I'm not going to do the same example up here you can see more complicated examples like this but it's the same concept as the 45 45 90 if you see something that doesn't look right you know just think to yourself how did I multiply from here to get to here that's that's the only thing you should think about alright so finally the final triangle I want to talk to you about is what's called the 60 60 60 degree triangle so this triangle is pretty common on the SAT too and this is known as an equilateral triangle okay equilateral just means all of the sides and all the angles are equal so for example if we have 60 degrees here I have 60 degrees here and I have 60 degrees here they all have to add up to 180 a triangle adds up to 180 because it's a polygon it's a closed polygon with three sides so uh, any closed polygon with three sides is going to be a triangle and it's going to add up to 180 degrees. Now this is equilateral which means that my base ratios are just one, one and one. Okay, But I also want to point something out here that this triangle is closely related to the one we just saw. So for example this triangle right here, the 30, 60, 90, this one is very closely related. So let's give an example of that. So let's just say that I did some huge triangle out here. Let's just say it's twice the size. So 2, 2, and 2. And this is my equilateral triangle. So I know my sides are going to be 60, 60, and 60. Um, just by virtue of the fact that it's equilateral triangle. Now, something very interesting can be done with this, though. If we needed to find the area of this, let's just say, <clears throat> and we didn't have the height, we can easily find it because if I take a line and I drop an altitude straight down from this it's gonna bisect this angle because it just so happens that that's 60 degrees and I'm dropping a an altitude straight down guess what kind of triangle I have well I bisect this angle 30 <clears throat> 30 here right and now this is 90 does that look familiar 30 60 90 30 60 90 look at that so if this was 2, right, and this was the side of the 30, then I know that if the whole side across here was 2, then each of these little sides here, this little side here is going to be 1, this little side here is going to be 1, right? And I know my height's going to be root 3, right, because it's opposite of the 60. So right there, I've taken this equilateral triangle and broken it down into its close cousin, the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if I wanted to find the area of this triangle, now I can say 1 half base uh, times height and I could find the, 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 the area of the triangle if I wanted to. So keep in mind that if you see an equilateral triangle, there's a very good chance that there's going to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle related to it in the problem. All right, that's all I got for you right now. Check back soon for more videos, and I'll talk to you soon.